money continually seems to flow in and out. While most of us have gotten to the point of having a budget in place by the time we reach adulthood, and it's never too soon to teach kids how to budget. We're being joined by Kayla Eatram, the president of Junior Achievement of South Dakota. She's here to walk us through how we can teach kids to create a budget and have better money habits as they grow. Welcome, Kayla. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you for inviting me. Now, how big of a difference does this make if kids are learning about this at a young age? What will that do for them into adulthood? We really think it's important to start young with kids so they can have building blocks to understand about money and personal finance and really grow as they get older. Because as we get older, things get more complex. So if we can start at the basics when the kids are little, then it just has more time to learn more and make sure they're successful when they reach adulthood. So let's get into some of these tips now. We have just before we even get into the younger versus older kids, let's just talk about the basics. I think it's so important when um, there's information out there for students to understand what money is. So talking about money, understanding that money is part of life. It's how you buy things you need and want and why parents, guardians, family members go to work. I have two little kids and they say, what happens at work and why, why do you go? Well, I love <laughs> what I do, right? But it's to have the money for the things we need, our house, our clothing, the fun things we get to do and having them understand that I think is super important. We have at our home, uh, play cash register so that they can count coins and dollar bills and understand the difference between those so when they see those objects around they understand they have value and what that means going forward and without those play toys a lot of people just have cards and I mean nowadays you can hold your phone up <laughs> and pay that way through Apple Pay and stuff yes. and you don't even have to bring out a card which if little kids are picking up on that, that could be a little bit confusing. Absolutely. We think that can be confusing. So that's why starting at the beginning is really helpful when they're little. So they understand that coins and cash, but also that there can be a banking or a credit union relationship that people get paid through direct deposit and it goes into account. Um, it's not often that people go into a bank on a weekly basis anymore. So understanding online banking and how debit and credit cards work is really important just to know that you can't just go into a store and walk out with what you need. There there is that transaction, that exchange of funds, even though you maybe aren't handing that dollar bill over. Exactly. So let's get into tips now for younger kids. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important for younger kids to understand needs versus wants. And this is something with Junior Achievement, we start even in kindergarten. So they understand that things they need are the basics, shelter, food, clothing, but there's also the things we want. We want to go fun places and have toys and understand that. But it's really understanding paying yourself first, doing the things that you have to pay for every month, um, saving some of your profit or your income every month so that you have that nest egg that you need um, and really just understanding that the difference between um, going into the grocery store for instance and having the cereal that you need to sustain or maybe the fun cereal that's a little bit of a treat um, and making sure you have the funds for that and understanding you might really want that fun cereal but we need this one um, to make sure that we're healthy and, and sustaining our bodies and why the needs need to be a priority over the wants. exactly and a lot of times too when you're a little kid you can't get a job. Right. I mean, there are some different circumstances. I know like when I was little, I would help pick rock on the farm or yeah. help mow lawn yes. and I would get paid for that. Mm -hmm. So I did have the opportunity to learn what that working aspect yeah. is, but there are things like lemonade stands too. So how can you use a lemonade stand to teach them when you're getting money, you're saving it, but then you also have to, you know, pay for the things you're buying for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I think a lemonade stand is such a great opportunity, even for younger kids, because they can understand, you know, they're receiving dollars for the goods that they're selling, where it's the lemonade or the cookies or whatever else is with the stand, but that the lemonade and the, the materials that were needed for that stand had to be purchased. So as the, typically the parents will fund the lemonade stand to start with, but helping them understand what that costs and doing that math after they get their profit and understanding what to do with that profit. There's a lot of banks out there right now where you have save, spend, and share to help students and kids understand what's important between those three things and how to be cognizant of the dollars they have. Is it important to explain to how much you're going to charge people for the lemonade and why? I mean with inflation we should be charging like five <laughs> bucks a cup, right? It should be quite a lemonade stand <laughs> this summer. I think that's important and you know it's it's the level that your kids are at and what they understand. You know it's it's um, it's demand and it's all the all of the things that come with economics and that maybe isn't right for a seven year old, but helping them understand the value of what they're selling and what they think people will pay for it so that they get the business they're looking to have. 
All right, Kayla, let's get into the older kids now. Yes, so a lot of times older kids are starting to get their first job. Um, they're understanding how to deal with the, the money that they're earning. So this is a good time. Um, a lot of kids maybe have a savings account when they're little, but it's taking them into the bank, helping them develop that checking account or getting the credit union, um, developing that checking account and having that relationship because a lot of times it is a direct deposit even with the first job in high school. So understanding how to do that. Um, I grew up with checks and a check register so I could balance my checkbook every month. I remember month watching know. my mom do that and then I'm like, why don't I ever do that? Exactly. Right? So now it's online banking and it's all these things that are so interesting, but helping them with those tools and making sure if they have expenses, maybe they're paying for a car or gas or whatever that looks like, that they have the funds to do that before they go out and do the fun things that high schoolers like to do as well. Do you think as a parent, when you are, you know, getting to that high school age where you can have a job and college, to start instilling like maybe in high school to have them start paying for things themselves. Cause I know I had some friends who kind of had everything handed to them, but then when they get into the real world, well then sometimes they still got stuff handed to them, but can that help instill good money habits? I think so, because there's a little bit of a safety net there. If you're in high school and you have to pay for things and you maybe make a mistake and don't have something at the end of the month to pay a bill you need, likely parents and guardians can help make up that difference. So I think it's a good time to practice, um, whether it's paying for car insurance or paying for gas or paying for activity fees. I think that's really important so that they understand the work they're putting in is helping benefit them for the things that they're wanting and needing as well. And how do you know when a good age is for your kid to have their own checking account or their own credit debit card? I think it's partly when they are responsible enough. And I think every kid is a little bit different in the way that they're ready. So a lot of times, you know, it's almost necessary when you get a job to have that, you know, ability to have direct deposits and be able to use the cards and, and get them out. Um, but it's really up to every family what makes sense for them. And, and maybe the kids don't have a job, but they get an allowance or other income that way. So that makes sense. I think what's really important too, and something that we talk about in our information is that the difference between credit and debit and credit right. isn't bad it helps build right. your credit score and some of those things but understanding to pay it off yeah. right away and i think too if parents can help kids understand that they're making better choices before right. they're out on their own as well. well thank you so much for coming in today and sharing this with us thank you for having me